2024 was a year of rapid growth for SpaceX Starlink internet. There were 89 dedicated Starlink launches, and that brought the total number of Starlink satellites to orbit over 5,000. And as you can see in 2025, well, they're not stopping yet with more and more launches still on the calendar. So with more and more launches from both here in Florida as well as out west towards California, well, in theory, the service is probably getting better and better. And it is, we're seeing that improvement with both the upload speed, the download speed, and also things like latency, which has a really big impact on gaming. But just how good is it since the last time we did an update? Well, let's uh, take a bit of a deeper dive into the numbers, shall we? For our testing, we ran more than 700 tests across three different days of the week, a Sunday, a Tuesday, and a Friday. We let these tests run pretty much for a 24 hour stretch to overall see the upload speed, the download speed, and the latency. We're also going to compare the values that we measured in March of 2025 compared to those in 2024 to see what kind of direction we're ultimately heading. Starting off with the download speeds, we were at 84.5 megabits per second on the average, but notice there are some pretty big swings. We can kind of see this related to what will likely be related to congestion. We have a lot more people on the Starlink internet service, your service will be degraded. And you really see that in the morning hours, that's likely due to teleworking from home, uh, doing things like virtual calls, that will likely have a pretty big impact on upload and download speeds because of just the usage. We also see a dip in that download speed as we approach the evening hours, likely when more people are streaming things at home, like Netflix or YouTube TV, etc. We also see the peak on the average and the running average is actually kind of in the late night hours, especially between about 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. That is when our average is ultimately the highest on a running total basis. Compared to our previous test, the download speed at 84.5 on an average is higher than January of 2024, but it's lower than July of 2024. While yes, we're launching more and more satellites, more and more people are also using the service. And in my particular cell, it, you have to pay more to get the Starlink service likely because we have so many more people using it. And I'm not overall surprised by that, given my location on the Florida Space Coast, where we launch these things. So probably a lot more people interested in Starlink and probably have a hand in it. Not to mention the fact that SpaceX operates here and they themselves use Starlink. So they might even have a little bit more extra priority than myself. Looking at the upload speeds, we did see a lift compared to the last previous times we ran this test. On average, we were at 22.9 megabits per second on the upload, but one thing I wanna point out still, a lot of fluctuation from the lows to the highs, there are some big, big swings, not only in time of day, but really from test to test. Upload speed continues to be the one thing with Starlink that is a bit lacking, especially if you really need those upload speeds. Say if you're a content creator or you do a lot of video calls at home, if you have these impacts to upload speed, you will see that with degradation in quality of your Facebook feeds or your Zoom calls or Skype calls or team calls. And you may also see some interruptions if you kind of dip below a certain threshold for that upload speed. So this area continues to be a bit lacking and something that I've continued to harp on. Well, the averages are getting better compared to January of 2024 when we were at 15.2 and July of 2024, we were about, about 20 even. The average did go up again, up to about 23 on average. But again, those fluctuations, you still have to continue to watch out for. Now let's jump over to latency. That is the time it takes for your computer to connect to a server and for it to ping back to you. That is latency. And when you're talking about trying to communicate with somebody via a video call, you want that latency low. Imagine you're talking on TV, you say something, you've probably seen the anchors toss to a reporter, there's a delay. That is latency. Most of the time that's due to satellite. Satellite trucks bouncing that signal. Starlink is an advantage because they're in low Earth orbit instead of way out in geostationary orbit. That significantly reduces the latency. 
and we did see an improvement pretty significantly in latency this go around. We averaged about 45 milliseconds this time with our March of 2025 testing. In January of 2024, it was about 65, with July of 2024 at about 59. And again, lower is better here. So that latency continues to drop. And one thing I also want to point out with this run of tests is the consistency. While the upload speed did have some pretty big spikes here and there, both lows and highs, the latency has a lot more consistency, and that means a much more stable internet connection. That's very important, not even so much for video calls, but gaming, which we'll touch on a little bit more in a minute. So again, overall, we continue to see the service mostly improve. The latency is improving, the upload speeds are improving on average, and the download speeds, we did see some reduction. Um, but overall, it's still not terrible. And I would say it's very usable most of the times a day. And I do think some of the issues with download speeds are related to just how congested my cell is. Now let's talk about the gaming performance of Starlink. And this continues to be an area I am particularly interested in. One, because it really is a stress test of Starlink to see how it performs, but also because I like to game. And this is something that's very important for things like first person shooters. <laughs> where action is constant and you really need that reaction time to be at its highest therefore you want the latency to be at its lowest and not only do you want the latency to be low but you want that latency to be consistent if you're jumping around with latency from like say 20 milliseconds to 60 milliseconds to 90 milliseconds back down to 40 milliseconds that change is really where you're going to have some problems when you're trying to adjust to latency and again this is primarily geared towards gamers but still i think the results do show some improvement the way we're doing this test we're running 12 different Call of Duty games. The first 30 seconds of that game, we're looking at the latency every single second and then seeing how much that's changing from second to second and across that 30 second period. This time around in March of 2025, that average change from low to high latency in a single game was 17 milliseconds, which is not ideal. You want that change to be likely in the single digits of milliseconds. And this actually did increase compared to July of 2024 when that change in latency was down to just 11 milliseconds. So we did see some degradation and improvement in the service here. However, compared to January 2024, so about a year ago, we had a significant improvement when that change in latency across those 30 seconds from high to low on average was 56 milliseconds. 56 milliseconds is a significant change in latency and you can certainly feel that. 17 milliseconds from min to low change you're gonna feel it, but not as much. And I would say the closer that you can get to by 10 milliseconds, the better. Now, when we look at our March of 2025 numbers, when you remove one of the outliers, it actually does reduce that average down to about 12 milliseconds, which is more in line to where we were in July of 2024. So we'll call it nearly break even with a bit of an outlier case. So kind of a bit of a conclusion, where do we stand with SpaceX Starlink internet? I would say the download speeds have kind of plateaued, at least for now. I think we're getting a lot more people using Starlink and that congestion is having an impact. In terms of upload speed, the averages, they did go up. However, we're still seeing those big spikes in minimums and maximums. That fluctuation continues to be a bit of a problem. And therefore, for content creators and people that maybe have to work from home, yeah, you're going to have some problems with Starlink. Now, if you're in a very rural area and your early only case for internet is Starlink, I mean, it's amazing compared to what you probably already have. Compared to existing satellite internet providers, it's night and day. Starlink is without a doubt goaded in this situation, and I would highly recommend it. But if you're in a more urban area or even suburban area around a metro and you're trying to think of a different internet service than, say, Comcast or Spectrum, yeah, I don't think Starlink is quite there yet. We're still heading, I think, ultimately in the right direction. 
And where it really matters, in my opinion, the latency, that does continue to get better and better, mostly. And with more Starlink satellites continuing to launch throughout 2025, and with new launch vehicles like Starship in the future that could bring maybe bigger capacity satellites to orbit, well, Starlink will likely continue to get better and better. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It really does help me out. Feel free to subscribe for more videos. And as the rumble of the Falcon 9 reaches here in Titusville area, we'll wrap it up. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you again in the next video.